viewers we are back to bear it all with uh, the editor of africa world newspaper okachuku with me is lasan uh, wedrego uh, from burkina faso resident uh, in ireland uh, we've been speaking about uh, burkina faso your country lasan and when did you come into ireland and how long have you been here uh, i came to ireland in 2007 february 2007 which is um, going to be almost eight years i've been in ireland it is uh, that's a almost a decade and you've uh, i should say you're irish yeah. uh, almost yes <laughs> so you know a good lot about uh, Ireland and Africans in Ireland yes. and the Irish themselves. Yeah, I would say yes, because I came to Ireland in 2007 and um, uh, respectively I had to go through a system that uh, I have learned a lot and um, I have traveled a lot across the country because I had to go through a immigration system that I wasn't uh, really aware of what was it about and that's really connected me to the country and to people and mostly uh, to the system as well. Okay, that's but it wasn't easier. That's interesting. And would you say since you arrived uh, in this uh, island of Ireland that uh, it's been all good and what's your experience? Have you been uh, have you disturbed by racism also? Oh my. I'm sorry to say that, but um, if I had to even give a percentage, I would say that even though today I'm, I can be grateful to, uh, you know, stays where I am today, I will tell you that it wasn't easy, like I said, and um, in terms of uh, good things or goodness, uh, I had gone through difficulties and, you know, hard time before getting where I am. And... Um, about racism, um, can refer you to my recent uh, interview with uh, RT1 Drive Time, which I spoke about uh, being victim of racism attacks, and um, talk about people have been witness of being attacked racially because of the ethnic background okay. or African background or color, and which is a bit com and, and, uh, disappointing in Ireland. The level of racism is growing up, yeah. and I'm wondering when the Irish authorities will stand up and do something before it's too late. Okay, and the recent government or the current government in Ireland, uh, I mean, the coalition of Fine Gael and Labour Party, uh, they've been uh, up and doing with uh, giving uh, citizenship to immigrants, even Africans, uh, per se. And uh, many people have been happy uh, with that development, although there are still knocks on their deportation policies and the direct provision uh, policy in, uh, uh, among the refugees. What would you say generally? Should they improve on addressing racism in the country? Okay, I will. Uh, I will be happy uh, to say a few words about it, and I hope. Our friends, the Minister of Justice, which is like a, an example for me when he was in opposition or before being in the government, when I was in the system, I will tell you that when I came to Ireland, I didn't understand English, I was not speaking English. I took some time before, you know, being able to understand things or communicate. And this is one of the ministers that I, I really uh, took as a mayor or example while he, before they, 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 they came to the power for his human rights campaign, his challenges, and has somebody who been, you know, human rights activist yeah. back home at a young age, you know, in politics, ended up in a life that I was not knowing what I was going through. What had I done to go through that in Ireland? I, this is someone that I was really wishing to become uh, Minister to come to the power and you know to stand uh, for what he was standing for. Listen, I will praise him for the citizen issues, but I will be more grateful to him if he can remember his campaign while in the opposition and his warning and do something for our 
you know, innocent people and vulnerable people. Like Hassan, that. sorry, can you uh, point out one clear uh, item in his campaign during his time as uh, an opposition? I mean, the uh, the current minister of justice, because you mentioned about and that. I will say quietly that I wouldn't remember exactly what yeah. date, but in July two thousand and ten, he said it personally that about the direct provision system that he was given, he will give six months to the current system to be ended. And, and if, it, nothing has happened. If, it, if it had lasted longer, it would be like one year or, or two years. Two he years, said that. Not more. He said because that. Because he believed that the system was wrong. Did he actually say that? He said it in, 2000, in, in, in July 2010. And coming to uh, the direct provision system, it's been... Uh, an issue in Ireland among uh, immigrants, particularly uh, uh, NGOs uh, working uh, for refugees and refu uh, asylum seekers themselves. What do you think about this direction, uh, direct provision system? Okay. Um, to be How honest, horrible is that? To be honest, I yeah. came in a, uh, at a wrong time in Ireland yeah. where there was a system like this which completely, uh, you know, uh, human rights violation. It's a completely system of abuse which I have, got, I have gone through. And um, I know each country has its own immigration policies yeah. and so on. I do respect the immigration policies. But in terms of human rights, in terms of human costs, and even in financial costs, in the system, I will say that the system doesn't work. And that I speak on my personal experiences for being one of the residents of the, the, the direct provision system. I wish something is done on time rather than you know keep pointing the financial cost while people are really suffering and i will give you an example simple example even if you're not against the system if you look at people being the, the direct provision was set up to not last for more than six months now people are staying in that for 10 years and more and even like five six seven years People end up being mental. People end up being depressed, stressed. And this is kept out of sight. And the medical costs of these people never been been evaluated mm. to add what they're spending for yeah. private owners. Because that money they spend for people um, does not benefit anyone than those who own, own the assets. So I will say that it doesn't work. And I will wish this what is your solution? I, 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 if you are asked to suggest or profile a solution on, on the remedy, what will you say? The remedy I will refer personally, not because I'm involved with the Irish Physical Council. Yeah. The Irish Physical Council <coughs> came with alternative solution to the direct provision, which is brilliant. Not give anybody more than six months. At the end of that, if either the cases have been decided or not, to be given alternative mm. solution in private accommodation where they can have the same life, being allowed to take studies or works while they're waiting for decision. And that I will tell you one thing. Imagine like, and when I got my residency, as anyone else, you have to go through social welfare process, rent allowance process, to get support from the state to integrate into the Irish society. One of the questions that I ask is what? You have to prove them that you are available for work. Imagine somebody been kept more than 10 years out of work. And you know, the yeah. job standards and the CV standards, 10 years out of work, 10 years out of education, 10 years out of uh, you know, work experience or professional training, who is the employer who is going to employ that person? And it's from it's after that, this person must start going back to school, going back to you know, training and so on, and that doesn't help even the state in terms of financial cost. And in terms of ability of these these people to yeah. carry on in professional duties yeah. will be a big question mark. So it doesn't work. If you think on terms of long term challenges, these people need to be put into you know decent lives condition, you know, life with dignity, dignities, respect. Where they can be, you know, yeah. they, they don't lose their self esteem, their confidences, mm -hmm. 
then when they are permitted to stay in this country yeah. or to live in here, they will be available immediately for work. But at this context, it doesn't work. Okay, uh, that's interesting with your solution or remedy. You are involved with the Irish Refugee Council? Yeah, I'm a volunteer with the Irish Refugee Council. Um, okay. I've cool. been working with the uh, um, Irish Refugee Council uh, behind the end cohesion campaign. Okay. Uh, and so far, what have you people achieved? Um, I will say that um, my warden will be saying thank you to the Irish Refugee Council for this effort and those who have been you know, involved from behind this campaign and making it, um, you know, um, effective. And uh, the campaign has raised a lot of awareness about direct provision, the challenges that is behind the direct provision, the issues that people are going, to, going through in direct provision. And actually, I would say that um, the outcome is positive. Yeah. And if you look at even till um, January, February this year, mm -hmm. the rate of the Irish um, immigration okay. um, granting asylum or leave to women or humanitarian yes. to asylum seekers here was below two, be, yeah. or below two, two percent. Two percent okay. Since that campaign and behalf of you know with the support of human rights issues, European um, groups and you know movements, and especially um, the good advocacy work yeah. done by the Irish Physical Council, I know that the level today we wouldn't I wouldn't put the credit every all the credit to them, but the level has gone up to ten percent, which is completely you know positive. So I would say that um, the, 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 the work had given, you know, um, positive results. And I hope um, those who have been supporting, especially senators and TDs and the bottom of um, the, 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 the end of direct provision, will continue to, you know, challenge the Lisa and the government to uh, uh, an effective end of direct provision. Okay. Uh, thank you for being with us in this short uh, test run. Beloved uh, viewers, uh, you are watching Bear It All on Africa World uh, TV. This is a test run of our show that is hitting live in January. With me is uh, Lasan Odrego from Burkina Faso. Lasan has been a wonderful campaigner of human rights, for human rights uh, and refugee issues. He's a volunteer with the Irish Refugee Council. Lasan, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. It's been wonderful having you here.